Nice. <laughs> Would you look at that? Would you look at that? You get some early tea shroom. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Investing Bros. And you can tell already. You clicked on this link. You came into this video because you want to see some blood in the streets. And I'm not talking about the price action. I'm talking about brother fighting brother, mother fighting daughter, son fighting dog, Solana versus Cardano. We are going to be talking about, and in this video, breaking down if I could only hold one, and if T Shroom could only hold one, and ultimately if you could only hold one of them, which one would you hold? I want to start off by saying the good news is, is you don't have to choose. You're allowed to hold both of them. That is part of the cool thing about the freedom of cryptocurrency and investing is you don't have to choose one. But it's always fun to chase these rabbit holes and go down the road of which one would you choose if you could only choose one. Make sure you stick around for that entire conversation. It's going to be a fun one. Even just what I'm looking at in chat right now is telling me how exciting today's show is going to be in that discussion but let's before we even get into it and get into the show, let's agree right here. Let's everyone come and hold hands. We're going to sing Kumbaya and agree. Both of them have room to the upside. Both coins have their bonuses and their negatives. And ultimately, you can hold both. You do not have to choose. That being said, now let the fight commence because we're going to hurt feelings and we're going to go after each other's personal thoughts. And it's going to be a blast. Before we do that, though, I'm going to introduce my co-host for this show, Mr. T. Shroom from down there in Gainesville, Florida. T. Shroom, <laughs> how are you feeling? Better than I deserve, Tim. My Solana oh. bags are uncertain. Oh. This is a this is a tough time for us okay. all. But I've got a are you very. Kind of giving away? Are you giving away your answer here early, like three minutes into the show? <laughs> we'll see. Maybe oh. we're going to have to wait and find out. Yeah. Just what is behind. The Brain of Tea Shroom. I've got an awesome quote of the day here for you, Tim. All if right. you wish to improve, be content to appear foolish or stupid, even if that means accidentally playing yourself in the intro of a live stream. Hey, uh, that's how you improve. Out. Listen, the greatest shows in the history of Investing Bros have been the ones with technical difficulties. It's true. So uh, if our track record holds up, this is going to be a top-viewed show uh, probably for the last week. Uh, last month, maybe the whole entire existence of the channel. Uh, I'm already noticing, again, some good old discussion and debate. But I did oh, yeah. put it there. Make sure you guys vote in the poll. If you could only hold one. And I wish I could see who was voting which one. But if you could only hold one, which one would you hold? I threw in a little bonus for you there. So Lana, Ada, or maybe some of you just came in because you want to see the whole world burn. And you think both these projects are trash. And there's 12% of 33 of you that have said that. So uh, you always love your nice, uh, your nice observers that like to eat the popcorn while communities go at each other's throats. Uh, right. Again, I, I, I will reiterate again. I really hope most people walk away from this understanding. Both of these coins have valid holding concepts. They're both going to do well, in my opinion, in this bull market. But – we're diving into the deep details. We're getting into the hard conversations. And in the hard conversation, if you have to choose one, we will have to make our choice. I'm going to save that here for a little bit later. Let's go ahead, T Shroom, before we dive in too deep into some news. And of course, what sparked this conversation is the big story with Solana this morning. Uh, but let's take a look at the charts here and just take a quick look there. And then again, we'll cover the news. We'll have our deep discussion. We will have Q&A at the end where you guys are more than happy to even cast your arguments and argue with anything maybe you hear me or T Shroom say. So this is uh, going to be fun. Let's take a look at Bitcoin here, T Shroom, king of the cryptos. Now, I got to do some. Uh, I got to do the technical analysis for Discover Crypto this morning. So I'm, some of this is going to be repeated because there's not a lot of big updates here. I did in our trading group with uh, the Investing Bros members. Discussed this heavily. I talked about short-term pumps, but keep an eye on some more longer-term falls. What we have going on right now with Bitcoin, Bitcoin is in a symmetrical triangle pattern. And I'll start by saying the bullish side of this. We did move bullishly into this pattern, which more often than not in traditional technical analysis, you end up moving to the upside. 
However, there are some things happening that are making me a little bit weary and believe that potentially this was just another rally to hit resistance. We have all the way until the 12th before this formation technically has to have a breakout. I'm not going to be surprised, though, ladies and gentlemen, to see the price of Bitcoin, whether it's stopped currently or it comes up and wicks somewhere close to this yellow line, maybe even a little bit above it. We have a nice little line sitting up here around 43.5. Uh, when we zoom out, though, of course, we're still keeping our eyes on what was the – let's see if it's still this way in the fixed range volume profile. We had a nice – so the value area high keeps dropping on us. Uh, that's not necessarily bearish. And some people are going to ask, like, it used to be up here. You guys watched TA last week. The value area high was all the way at 45,200. Now it's sitting at 44,8. What I'll say is all, all that means is there's been a lot of trading happening here. I mean, this all of the trading happening in this little zone has really continued to drop the value area high. Now, the point of control is still sitting here right there on 42.7, was recently used as kind of some nice support here. But we turn on the Luxago indicators, and this is where we start to st – Ask some questions. Could this get bearish? Now, here on the four-hour chart, you will notice that technically we are under a buy signal right now, and we have a take profit up here towards this value area high. Let me just go ahead, just because it is moving, we're going to keep dropping this down. You'll also see we have a red reversal uh, zone coming in at that same level. Uh, but when we start to pull up the oscillators, you're, you're seeing some confliction here. Uh, we are now kind of processing the money flows going to the upside. MACDs, after touching the mid-level, is going to the upside. RSI, after bouncing, is going back up. But we do have a red reversal dot right there. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, when you come all the way to the daily chart, this is where, again, things could change. The MACD actually did start moving back up today because we're under a more of a bullish candle. That looks red right there, but I turned this off. We do have a white candle on the daily chart right now. So the MACD is moving positively again. But looking at the Lux Algo indicator, and after the show today, I'm going to be shooting a trading strategy that I have been using and crushing it in the scalping game that has been more than 80% accurate and successful with this trading calls. It's not looking good here for Bitcoin. Let me make this full screen, and I'm explaining this better on in the video, but this is the Lux Algo premium indicator, and you can see here we have a trifecta of negative things happening. Daily chart reversal just came here a couple of days ago. Our oscillator flipped over, giving us a bearish momentum dot, and the money flow today has just gone negative. That does not mean that we have to immediately drop and just fall out from under us. What it does mean, though, is that this on the daily chart is flashing. As we're coming to some critical resistance, we're seeing a bearish call here on the charts. We're also under a sell order still from way back in January. That has the take profits continuing to be in this range of at the highest 39,500, but potentially even dropping us all the way back down towards 37, give or take. When you look at the daily support zone, now you're starting to see, all right, well, the high of that is 37, the low down here towards 32. And these candles are still red, meaning Luxalgo is still pegging this entire movement as not being a bullish movement. We haven't even turned purple back to indecision. We're still under a bearish trend. Uh, with these candles right here. So it, there's a little bit of flip-flopping here. I'm going to continue to hold out that there is still a potential in the next couple of days. We do make a move up here back towards 45, or now at this point, the, this uh, value area high is sitting right here around 44.7. Either way, even if we break to the upside, I want to continue to caution everybody. There still is a lot of indicators pointing to the downside, and I would be – you know, I, I would be remiss to tell you just to ignore bearish indicators and just go with your your hopium, and that is that everything will go up. We, of course, have some recent bearish news on Bitcoin that another entity, Genesis, has received permission to sell their GBDC. Of course, what was the main catalyst for the price movement downward in the first place? GBDC being sold off. As the price moves higher, that gives some of these entities a greater excuse to take more profit and dip prices back down to those lower levels. And of course, I can say my good old faithful, I say it every single day, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it once again. In case you're new here, do not rule out this $32,000 region because this is former untapped resistance, never turned back into support, and historically that just does not happen very often without a retouch. So I'm continuing to look for lower levels there. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room in a very weird way. Of course, today, and we're going to get more into this in the news section, but everyone is discussing Solana. Solana, 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 Solana. Why are we talking about Solana? Well, Solana had 
another outage. Now, this is the first one in over a year, but it's got everyone going crazy. However, if you take a look at what's happened, the price action is actually moving to the upside. And right now, we're actually making a very bullish move here on Solana. Don't don't read too much into this, but we were in a descending triangle, which are very, very, very bearish, but we're breaking the resistance level right now. Let's take a look here using Lux Algo. You will see what we're doing right now. Even though we've broken through, we're working on taking out an order block. So this is not necessarily over, but we do have take profits even all the way up back above $100. So look out for potential bullish movement on Solana. I told our trading group this morning, I said, I am not going to touch a short on Solana with a 10-foot pole right now because a lot of people are going to take advantage of the sentiment in the space. Everyone's going to think it should be bearish, and more often than not, you see the price move in the opposite direction. Well, here on the alley chart, we recently printed bullish flash here. We're moving bullish. We're breaking through resistance. Keep an eye on these upper levels. However, let's take a look at these longer time frames, such as, for example, the four-hour chart. I'm going to continue to keep my eyes on. We are under a sell order here, and yes, we're bouncing to the upside, but we're seeing a lot of negativity. We're seeing a reversal come in. The money flow, even though it's flowing positive right now, is not really necessarily doing anything very quickly. Uh, when you come out to other time frames, even on the daily chart, for example, our oscillators are moving back down to the downside. Either way, I'm keeping my eyes on potentially a look back down here to an order block and potentially even into – uh, our take profit zone down towards 85. And before we had this breaking resistance, I did tell people keep an eye on potentially $82. Uh, why is that? Because these triangle patterns often have breakouts like this. You take the top to the bottom and then you move this over to the breakout. That would give us an $82 Solana. But right now we are moving up to the upside right now, breaking the resistance up 2% on the day. Uh, so good for Solana, despite some negative news there. We can go deeper into that later on in the show. Let's take a look at Cardano, since that's the other conversation Let's we're talking that. about here. Uh, last one, and then we're going to get into the news here, t -shirt. We are in a symmetrical triangle pattern of our own here on Cardano. And sure enough, we did find some support right down here again. We are rallying just like Solana. So it's going to be an interesting debate here. Solana up 2.5 or 2.1% on the day. ADA up just below 2% since the daily candle has opened. Uh, areas to keep an eye on. Now, we're under a sell order here, but of course, nice order block sitting up here on 52 cents. That was the high we were at just back here a little bit ago. But this is another one. I'm looking at potentially here on the four-hour chart. We're seeing some bearishness with some take profits and order blocks coming down here towards 46 cents. If it gets really bad, we're talking about even down deeper into this green reversal band down towards 44. But let's kind of take a look at the top side of that uh, for the starters right now. We're seeing a lot of projects even though they're short-term bullish like 15 minutes can be bullish maybe even the hourly chart you start moving out to the four hour and daily charts and it's not necessarily so you can see here most of these projects are sitting bearish on daily charts here was gonna load for me oh well, we got an actually bullish day for cardano but like i said uh we recently had the neo cloud turn red this is one i don't necessarily read the daily take profit being above us too seriously i'm more concerned about what i'm seeing with oscillators for example red reversal and a bearish momentum dot money flow still positive but if that starts to change as the rsi is heading back towards the 50 that could get negative very very fast either way moral of the story people are asking tim what should we do today what should we trade should we long should we short ultimately today is a messy day you want to wait for either some of these higher levels to be hit to short or you want to wait for some of these lower levels to be hit to long today is a day where traders are probably getting wrecked left and right because the only people who actually know what's happening are the ones that are controlling the order books and that unfortunately is probably nobody watching this channel so unfortunately i cannot give you an answer as to which way you should trade Either way, though, at the moment, things are looking bullish for both of our contenders on the show today. But with that said, T Shroom, let's take a break from the TA and price action talk. Let's get into the news. We'll finish up the news conversation with our big debate. If you could only hold one coin now, moving forward, Solana or Cardano, what would it be? It's going to be a fun one. But let's start off with the news, T Shroom. What do you got for us? All right, Tim. Well, I'm going to start off with the crypto bubbles, which says it all. And that is that. XMR Monero has been delisted from Binance. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, yeah. uh, but this is this is the result: 37 percent to the downside. And this is a this is very much a green day, right? Lido up 6.2, Tau up 11.9, Pendle up 9.8, right? So there's winners. 
<laughs> not to mention this guy right here, DYM up 46%. Never heard of that coin, but that's that's, you that's that's your mom's favorite coin. Do your math. That's the do your math coin. Is it really? No idea. I just made Dimension. That close. Yeah. It was very, very close. All right, Tim, let's go ahead and jump on into some other headlines that you may have heard of today already. That is that Solana went down again. Decrypt saying it likely won't be the last time. Yep. So do you have a quotation here? Helium Labs co-founder, which uh, famously Helium Labs is uh, on Solana. It's built on Solana now. It migrated. And CEO Mertz Muntaz says he's prepared to take the heat that comes with it. What we can't do is be afraid to progress for the sake of not being harassed on Twitter. Muntaz told Decrypt. Now, the quote of the day, I'll remind you, is if you wish to improve, be content to appear foolish or stupid. And this is from a very, you know, pre-Christ philosopher Epictetus, right? Way, way, way into the BC of it all. I don't know that that's exactly the frames that he would have selected, uh, but this is the Probably, though. I mean, he was pretty epic. So, would 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 factor in he had the coolest glasses of the day. Exactly. But there is proof, unfortunately. Uh, right here, you can see the main net here from Solana actually down for an entire yeah. four. Well, almost and, five hours. Yeah. So that, that is rough. Ski. Yep. Big time. Now, the the actual blocks are propagating again. You can see here when I refresh, solar.nfm. You can see just a few seconds ago, we had a block, right? Transaction forming the block. Very, very good that it's back up and can confirm on the blockchain here on Investing Bros that it is back up. But Tim, it really kind of begs the question, right? Is the theme of today is that sometimes things break. The intro for today's show was broke. Yeah. It's and true. it ultimately kind of comes back to this question, Tim, that Mark Zuckerberg paced uh, just a little while ago, a couple years ago before he invented Facebook, right? And he got a lot of investment because of this philosophy that, of course, is moved fast and break things. And if we know anything about the VCs that funded Facebook, right, and that are ultimately funding projects that are favored by Wall Street like Solana, then we know that they think very similarly to Mark Zuckerberg. And moving fast and breaking things is very common. Downtime on general software such as Amazon, Google, GoDaddy.com. There's all kinds of internet W uh, 2.0 that has gone down and has downtime. So, Tim, mm -hmm. are we in a world where it is acceptable for blockchains to move fast and break things? Well, I mean, it's not up to me to say yes or no because I'm not the ultimate person, but I, I'm going to have to speak on the behalf of of people with that question and say, yes, it, it is. Like We're, we're still early. I, I hope people actually understand, and I'm going to quote somebody that said we are still like in five years we will look back on things now and think oh wow we knew nothing about blockchain technology do you know who that person was t shroom it might be someone that people are not thinking would have said this in this argument and this is like he actually is making an argument for solana that's kind of a, that's kind of a hint towards who it is do you know who said that who charles hoskinson quoting? charles hoskinson charles hoskinson himself for the founder, of, or we officially co-founder of Cardano, even though he was the main founder, in an interview done within the last 12 months, literally talked about how we are so new to blockchain technology. We're so young here. It is time to figure things out. You know, people have accused Cardano of moving way, 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 way too slow to figure things out, almost like the approach of like a professor at an institute, slowly but surely grinding. Well, guess what? The problem with Cardano is they're not moving as fast as people want them to move. They're okay with looking foolish that way because their philosophy is move slow but sure, be secure, and we'll figure out how to do this over a long period of time. But then you have the Solanas of the world, like a, like a young three-year-old boy who just want to run at 100 miles an hour no matter where they go. They fall down, they hurt their knees, but they learn things. And again, we're, we're not yet in the conversation of which one we're buying. I'm complimenting both. Cardano has chosen the sh slow but steady route to learning, growing, and developing. And Solana has the move fast, risk breaking things, figure it out after you break it. And ultimately, both of those strategies can be successful moving forward. And again, I'm going to sit here, go to my screen here real quick, just in case people are wondering, like, man, is Solana done now after this crash? I want to remind you when the last crash was. Last crash was about a year ago, back in February of 2023. And I have to imagine, I don't have the exact date sitting in front of me, but let's just give it the most 
uh, aggressive level, let's just say it was this peak right here around February 20th. Well, since that crash, yes, originally we had a nice little 41% dip, and then later on we went even down 52%. But since that crash, we have been as high as 361% to the upside, and we are currently trading around 260% higher than that level. What does that say, everybody? That says that Solana, despite the fact that it goes out, that it has outages, there are still people that believe in it, are pouring into it, and it still has a bright future. I think that the markets as a whole are going to pull back here in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. So Solana is going to pull back. But ultimately, if people are saying, oh, Solana had an outage, it has to be dead now. That's not necessarily the case, t -Shroom. We've had outages. In fact, we've had a lot of outages. I would almost make the argument, let's, let's instead of focusing on the negativity of Solana going out today, let's focus on the positive of, they used to have an outage like once a month or at least once a quarter. It's been an entire year since their last outage. That's actually somewhat impressive. I think that is a kind of a win for Solana, that their team has been holding it together better over the last year. And yeah, they have so much stuff going on. They had too many people in there. It, it got too hot. It got overburnt. It went out. It's still out, but they're going to get it fixed. It's going to go back up. Uh, price action is up since the outage has happened. I'm not too concerned about long term. And, you know, I may, uh, well, before I move on here, T Serum, do you have any thoughts before I continue? I, I'm going to have an analogy. Uh, no, I mean, everything you're saying is right. I, I want to hear this analogy. I, I put the analogy on Twitter as well, but I originally made it this morning when I was on Discover Crypto. And, and, and it's not a perfect analogy. So stay with me, though, guys. And, and I appreciate the concept. A lot of people, especially people within the Cardano community, I think even Charles Hoskinson has kind of chimed in, kind of bad mouthing Solana for their outages. You know, if Cardano had this level of an outage, more than likely even Cardano holders would say, we're done with Cardano. We're not dealing with this anymore. This is enough. We're moving to some other exchange, right? Cardano, if it has this kind of a problem, no one will want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Why? It's actually a compliment to how well Cardano runs with security and protective natures. It's like a five-star restaurant. If you go to a five-star restaurant and you're dropping $100 on your plate of food and that food does not taste good or something is wrong with it, you're never going to that five-star restaurant ever again. Solana, on the other hand, is like a McDonald's. How many times have you rolled up into the McDonald's drive-thru, you order a McFlurry, but the machine is broken? And then the very next night, you roll right back into the same exact drive-thru and you say, I'm ordering a McFlurry. It doesn't deter people. Ultimately, I think that the concept of what Cardano's doing, the truly decentralized, slow nature, let's get this done right and offer our, our users security and sureness, it's like the surety of a five-star restaurant. You're not gonna you're not gonna sell a thousand, you're not gonna have a thousand customers at a five-star restaurant every night. You're gonna prioritize it. It's high. So a lot of though, we're just we're just winging it. We're just out here. You got a burger, you get a burger, you get a burger, you get a burger, you get a McFlurry. Oh, the McFlurry's broken. Give me a second. All right. That's Solana, right? And there's benefits and drawbacks to both of those. Ultimately, both businesses can do very, very well, but that's what we're looking at. McDonald's, Solana's like McDonald's, and Cardano is like a five-star restaurant. That's my analogy for these two projects. I like it, Tim. There, there's different expectations, right? One is going to, going to the traditional Silicon Valley method, and that would be Solana. And whereas Cardano, I, I think you, you kind of hinted at this earlier, it's kind of going the university american north american university route where it's kind of this slow methodical not really mm -hmm. catching the interest of too many people until it does and all of a sudden as you have you know the computer software capable to create chat gpt and, and suddenly everybody cares right yeah. so these things they, they it's actually kind of nice it's it's a nice little natural selection system here where you have many different systems that have a lot of promise uh kind of growing and developing under different conditions and under different leadership and with different expectations. And Solana, you know, one of the big things, I really liked your analogy, Tim, but one of the things I was harping on this morning in the 9 a.m. show is that the capital, the average dollar invested into Solana versus Cardano, I believe kind of shares this core value, right? Which is a much more Wall Street, much more VC value than what we're used to in in blockchain because at the end of the day blockchain is security software right in, in a lot in a large part it's it's taking the brilliance behind just encryption in general right and, it, and it's security software so it makes sense that folks in crypto crypto natives put security as such a high top priority and uptime as a top priority i get it right but vcs yeah. understand that if they buy a startup tech company there's going to be downtime 
and mm-hmm. and I think that is a big question today is like is it okay for blockchains to have downtime to have issues of this magnitude certainly when we look at the price for Solana the market is saying oh it's fine by us right so let's move on because we actually do have uh we had some great analogies there I love it love the riff love the fun uh, Charles Hoskinson. I, I, wanted, I wanted to clarify because Kev, Kevin Hughesman said he's like, you can buy ADA at value meal prices versus Solana's steakhouse prices. That's what I, someone else pointed out earlier. Like, yeah, we're talking about a hundred dollar Solana versus a fifty cent uh, ADA. Don't think of it that way because ultimately, I can buy a hundred dollars of Cardano or I could buy fifty cents of Solana. What I'm talking about is use case. It's Solana's faster, cheaper. It breaks. Cardano is, man, you got to know what you're doing here. It's a fine establishment. It prioritizes decentralization. So it's like, uh, we'll talk more about that later. But like, here's what I'll say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one thing about Cardano that maybe Cardano people won't like. But you have to understand this. And you, and you ultimately, you can't argue with it. It is easier to build. If I am a person wanting to build something on a platform right now, it is a thousand times easier to build something on Solana. Now, it's not decentralized. It's vulnerable. I could have an outage that shuts me down for four and a half hours, but it's really easy. Versus Cardano, I'm not a script writer. I don't, I'm not building on platforms, but those are the people that I do know who do so. Cardano is not necessarily easier to do so. You have to know what you're doing with code. And they're working on it slowly but surely. Every update makes it a little easier, a little easier. But let's not lie to ourselves, Cardano holders. And I love Cardano. I do. I believe in its future. But let's not lie to ourselves and act like it's the easiest and most intuitive place to go building your uh, Web3 concepts on or your, your NFT platforms or anything else. It's it's way more complicated it's just better at the moment because it's decentralized. Absolutely. Well, Tim, you know, people are talking about it in the chat. They're going to be talking about it in the comments, yeah. but it doesn't need to stop there, bros. We can take that next step. Come into the Discord. You can find the link to that right here. We can keep the chatter going. Tell us what you think and get the bros talking about what we want to talk about. We're going to make it happen. Now, Tim, we've got another story here from Charles Hoskinson. He's saying, congratulations, guys, to this project that just went live. As Solana was having downtime, Axo was going live on the Cardano mainnet, right? So a little bit of a juxtaposition there. And check out this app, Axo. You see, you've got this you know, fairly sophisticated trading uh, system here. And then with the click of a button, it's right to this just simple, comfortable, and uh, kind of something that I recognize, recognizable little swap, little swap decks there. So that's that's pretty cool. Charles Hoskinson, of course, uh, definitely has not been shy at doing some victory laps today. Where I got to find this gif here. Uh, where did he put? It was it was a little funny. Yeah, this one here. This was his commentary for the the Solana downtime, <laughs> which is which is pretty good, pretty epic. Uh, Getting into the next story here, we've got a soundbite here from Janet Yellen. So before we get into the rest of the news, which there are some some crumbs and some interesting cookies yet to crumble, yeah. uh, so we'll get we'll get to those in just a second. But do we have any culminating thoughts? Do we want to go ahead and make our decision about nah, Cardano? No, no versus we're gonna, we're gonna keep drawing this out. Listen, we, there's a lot of great conversations we had so far. The poll is going nuts. You chat is you know they're having their internal discussions. I love it. Again, as long as we keep it respectful, this is exactly what I love. I love when people come in and debate ideas and have conversations. Yeah. Make sure in chat. I'm not seeing anything disrespectful, so I'm not calling anybody out. Just keep it respectful as you guys disagree with each Except other. Except for Eric Wall. Uh, we're here to learn. We're here to learn. Exactly. All right. Well, speaking of learning, guys, let's go ahead and jump on into this clip from Janet Yellen, your Treasury Secretary for the United States of America. Council is focused on digital assets and related risks, such as runs, such as from runs on crypto asset platforms and stable coins, potential vulnerabilities from crypto asset price volatility, and the proliferation of platforms acting outside of or out of compliance with applicable laws and regulations. Applicable rules and regulations should be enforced, and Congress should pass legislation to provide for the regulation of stable coins and of the spot market for crypto assets that are not securities. We look forward to continuing to engage with Congress on this. With this overview, I look forward to taking your questions on these and counsel. Say what you will about Janet Yellen. She's got the riz. I have never seen such strong charisma on somebody. 
Uh, Tim. <laughs> yeah. The secretary, Janet Yellen, asking yeah. Congress to go ahead and draft up some legislation for crypto with, it sounds like, a specific focus on stable coins. Now, I know you've been saying this for a long time, that stable coins are going to be a big shoe to fall. What are your thoughts here? you think we're closer? Is well, it days rather than months away? I 100% agree with the concept of having regulations for stable coins. A, because there are stable coins that have been very problematic and have taken a lot of money from people. But B, also because if you don't have regulation, then you never know. Uh, it is a wild west. I'm tired of them saying that crypto is a wild west, but it is. Once we have regulations, we at least know the rules to play by. Here's the problem. While I agree with her that there should be regulation, we all know, especially based off of some terminology put in there, where she was like, for all the ones that are not deemed securities, meaning she's referring to one of her friends, Gary Gensler's definition of what a security is. We all know that what she wants is regulation that restricts the freedom of stable coins and potentially promotes uh, CBDCs, right? Regulation is not inherently itself a bad word or a good word. There are regulatory policies that can be very good and there's regulatory policies that can be very bad my guess is that she wants the regulation that leans towards bad and that's where i'll disagree with her she wants the regulation that will allow cbdc's to take place that will keep power in the government power in the u.s dollar and ultimately harm and limit the potential of stable coins that part i absolutely disagree with her on but i do think regulation needs to happen and my my hope especially with election season coming up Everyone wants to talk about the Trump versus Biden, the president of the United States. But honestly, guys, oh, as important election. as that one is, what we need to be paying attention to is who are the senators? Who are the congressmen? Who are, who are the people that are running that actually make these types of decisions? Let's get the right members of Congress in there that pass common sense, constitutionally based freedom regulations, regulatory policies that actually allow stable yeah. coins and cryptocurrencies yeah. to flourish but not harm people. I mean, one of the biggest things I worry about with stable coins is are they backed, right? And, and just like yeah. as a pedestrian, you know, crypto bro, I'm yeah. not going to necessarily be able to have you say, "Hey, yeah, hey Tether, uh, can you go ahead and send me that prospectus for you, for the you total know backing?" You want to know what's so crazy? You want to so crazy though is could they actually with I mean, they they could do. They could do this cuz it's the government. Right. So let's start by saying that. But with straight faces, though, and honesty and lack of hypocritical reasoning, could they could they demand that stable coins back every dollar when banks don't have to back every dollar? Like the current system, they do not back everything that stable coins current. like the entity holds as many dollars as they've issued tether. Is that kind of what you're saying? Which, by the way, that's a bad example because tether is one of the ones, at least from what we've seen, they do have it f fully backed. My point is. They don't require banks to back every dollar. Yeah, I don't. Not, I don't what? think they could ever do that, right? They don't. Yeah. They also don't require companies to back their shares yeah. with dollars, right? That's so it's it's just funny that they're. Is. That's where everyone's getting to is like, oh, no. back it with all the dollars. I'm like, where in the history of our like, where in our recent economic no. outings have we backed things with the dollar? Like we don't. Like we don't ever do that. We we have built the entire economy based off of leverage and borrowing. And that's why we're at $34 trillion of debt and banks are collapsing. I ultimately hope the Congress, maybe they, maybe they institute that policy worldwide, uh, not worldwide, but you know, entity-wide. And maybe even banks have to start. They can't issue loans that they don't have the money to actually mm -hmm. uh, it, give those yep. loans up. Yep. The, reg the, the government loves to regulate everything but Except itself. itself. Yeah. <laughs> right? This is, a, this is a gross, disgusting, and honestly horrifying uh, lack of regulation on on the government self right here, uh, illustrated by the U.S. national debt. It's always a fun one. Well, Tim, we do have some bullish news. Well, this is actually an interesting story. So is this bullish or not? South Korean regulator to meet with SEC Gary Gensler, maybe you've heard of him, to discuss spot Bitcoin ETFs. So the South Koreans, when the spot Bitcoin ETF went live here domestically, it got the thumbs up from the regulator, the SEC. Uh, chaired by Gary, uh, Gary Gensler, there were headlines saying South Korean not doing the same thing, right? And their their financial regulator saying, nope, we wouldn't do that right now, right? Which is important. You got the opposite response from Hong Kong, from China, right? So it is very interesting for Gary Gensler to be booking a meeting with the South Korean regulators. Now, officially, he voted for the Bitcoin spot ETF. Could he kind of throw a curveball to the crypto markets, though? Not that we're his chief audience. And go ahead and say, hey, Koreans, 
you don't want to do this. This is bad news. All the ETFs are going to get shut down in the U.S. in the next five years. You don't want to do this. Stay out of it. Or is he going to be like, we did it. Green light. Was that a question? There was. Is he oh, going to be I like, do it. it. Green light. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh, it was such a long sentence. I couldn't remember how it started if it was a question or a statement. Oh, oh. Yeah. That, Some say it's not you. zoomed in you enough. Up right there. <laughs> You're welcome, America. Forget forget coffee. Just wake up to that image. You're good yep. to go. That'll get you going. Get you juiced up. That'll get the adrenaline. That'll get the the fight or flight, you know, <laughs> hormones a pumping. Exactly. Exactly. Mostly Tim. flight. You Most, get it. Oh, you get it. Look at that. Ankle. More eyeball in there. Yeah. That's that's a haircut within the last three days, I'd say. That is a black eyeball right there. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Staring right into the soul of the SEC. Goodness gracious! All right, well. So will this be will this be bullish? Do you think? Do you think ultimately, when he shakes the hand over there in South Korea, that he's going to be saying "run it," or is it going to be like "nah"? Gary Gensler. Yeah. I don't think you are legally even supposed to uh, allowed to say Gary Gensler and bullish in the same sentence. It's true. So it's true. Uh, I'm going to say no. He did. He was the swing vote though for the spot Bitcoin ETF yeah. to be passed. I, I hate I the Koreans love, can't find him. I would love to hear him. more about what it went into that. Yeah, I would love to know more about what went into his vote. But anyway, yeah, let's True. keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. We got, again, we have Q&A coming up. We have not even jumped into mine and T-Shroom's thoughts. We've gotten a lot of chat conversation about Cardano versus Solana. If you could only hold one, which one would you hold? We got to get me, mine and T-Shroom's answers in here. Do we have any more stories, T-Shroom? Absolutely. Real quickly, this is going to be a pretty big geopolitical attention grabber here. Uh, oh. Tucker Carlson saying why he's going to be interviewing Vladimir Putin. We're not playing this video, but this is going to be any. This is not the yeah, interview, yeah. by the way. It has not been published yet. This is going to be big. Wait, he, it's going to be big. Has we'll he see already how it goes. interviewed him, or is he going to interview him? He may not have. Really. My guess is that he has not interviewed him yet, and that is going to take place and probably be probably won't be streamed just because of the potential geopolitical outcomes of of what he. <laughs> Uh, Putin needs to be able to edit it. He needs to be able to have some editing oversight. So probably that's going to be pre-produced. Um, but the, the point here is that th this could be pretty big. I mean, Putin okay. could say something about oil. He could say something about U.S. inflation. He could say something about just general, the BRICS, right? And ultimately, what's important here is that the the Russian kind of message to the world on the war in Ukraine, oil prices, right? The, the 2024 American election, all of these... All of these opinions are, very, and this is a fact, are very heavily suppressed by Western media. Some might say, rightfully so, right? I think that there's definitely arguments to be made to suppress the Russian narrative. I don't think it's a good narrative. But what's important here is that Tucker's going over there. And he, Tucker is somebody who, you know, he's had some very high-profile interviews, and he's been yes. able to squeeze some truth out of those interviewees, right? That maybe the rest of the public was not privy to. Uh, now, speak, before, go ahead. Before the show went, you gave a prediction t shirt on how many views a yeah. video, an interview with Vladimir Putin could do for old uh, for old Tucky K. I yeah. think he's gonna. I think it's gonna perform well. I think this might this might be one of the first political interviews that gets into the billions in like a month, wow. right? So like so like with that now I don't know I don't know maybe not billions. That's a lot. Billions is a lot, but I could easily see like across, I could definitely see across of uh, so in thirty days across platforms i think it could see a billion oh well what platform do you think it's, i mean maybe x, it'll make it on YouTube. rumble too it's, it's gonna be an x i don't think it's gonna make it to youtube i don't you think youtube will allow it to get on yeah. i think people will be able to clip portions of it and get it up in here no there's there's i mean there's uh like probably thousands of of live you know uh messages from putin that's that's posted on youtube every day i would imagine yeah, and i don't gonna, think they I, censor I think everything they're gonna take it down as soon as they can i don't know I don't know. I think you, well, that's a whole nother conversation. We'll see. Yeah. I, I don't think, so I think it gets posted on YouTube, probably not by Tucker himself, but by just, you know, the same people that repost Alex Jones. Content, uh, yeah. Right? And people will post it. It'll get taken down. They'll post yeah. again. It'll get taken down, but ultimately it'll, it'll stay on the likes of X rumble, yeah. maybe truth. Does anyone put a one in chat? If you use truth, I've never even truth social thought about, Oh, that's true. Truth social. Never yeah. even thought about something. my handle. My handle Wait. on Truth Social, by the way, Baby Mama Drama four twenty. So you guys can follow me there. I will say, and we're gonna move on here. But T Shroom, this is just a little side note that we're gonna just say right in front of people. We what do we, got? we probably should create a Rumble account. We have a Rumble the account. The future, 
the f- okay, good because the yep. future, and we probably need to be simulcasting to it because the future of what can be said on YouTube, even in the crypto landscape, is probably yep. going to get to a place where we might want to have a backup, especially if we have Bitcoin Ben on all the time. So yeah, if we're going to have Bitcoin Ben on, we probably definitely should. You know who's really Rumble. big on Rumble that I like? Um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand, man, I, I yeah. feel like I agree with him on so many things. He's he's an interesting character, and he, he talks with his hands a lot. Like your okay. boy. Tim, we've got one more story and then we can go ahead and let loose. Yeah. Bitcoin yes, yes. ETFs mean substitution from gold into Bitcoin will continue, says Kathy Woods. A short quotation here from her in between the GBTC advertisements. There's now a substitution into Bitcoin. And we think that is going to continue now that there is a much easier way to access Bitcoin. Of course, referring to the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Not a surprise that she's saying this, right? But she's getting yeah. a quotation in here. Uh, right, probably didn't know that. Obviously, didn't know that the Solana stuff was going to totally wreck that that uh, PR moment for Kathy Woods. All right, Tim, I think we're ready to go ahead and it's, slip right on into it. This is what everyone was ready for. This is it. All right, so let's read the poll. You know, we've had 220 people in here, so shout out to everyone. If you have not smashed like, smash that like real quickly. If you have not voted in the poll, vote because we've had 179 votes, t room. I bet you there's 30 people watching right now that have not voted on that poll. Vote on the if poll. you could only hold one of these coins, which coin would you hold? Solana, ADA, or they're both trash. Uh, at the moment, we, we have a hefty Cardano community. 59% are saying Cardano, 34% saying Solana, 7% saying they are both trash. Yeah. Uh, so you guys are just uh, the spectators with your popcorn. So the community has spoken as a whole, even though that's that's actually a little closer than I thought it was going to be, teacher. Uh, I would have thought that maybe they'd be a little higher with uh, Cardano. The community has spoken here, Investing Bros. It, they've said they'd rather hold Cardano long term. I'm going to start off with you. If you could only hold one, and once again, we thank the Lord that we can hold both of these coins, because I think both of them are going to do very well in this bull market. Which one would you choose if you could only hold one of them, and why? I think that people are getting really really torn apart by this by this question and and it's not it's not needed right because when you hold solana and ada you're really standing on the 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 bedrock of what is natural selection like trying to figure out what is the best idea to perpetuate into the future both of these systems are excellent ideas when it comes to transacting payments and hosting dApps decentralized applications right NFTs, you know, there's a lot of other use cases, but both of these projects are going to do well. I used to believe that Solana was not going to do well. I was proven wrong by the market. I think that ADA has been, is going to do really well. The market has not really validated that, especially if you look at the performance of ADA versus Solana. Solana in 2023 did so much better, right? Now, if I had to pick one, it would be ADA because all because I'm not a, at the end of the day, I'm not a VC, Right, I'm not a Wall Street bro. I didn't come up in Silicon Valley at some st- at some tech startup. Therefore, you can't expect my DNA to be okay with the move fast and break things principles. I think overall, ADA is a better investment if I only had to pick one. But guess what, guys? You don't. You have yeah. to pick one in the polls. But the beauty is you get to paint on the canvas of your portfolio. Tim, what's your pick? Yeah, so uh, people are going to – Gustavo says, boo, you only gave binary option. You have to choose. All right, we're gonna. right, I'm going to choose. I'm going to tell you guys, though, what it is. In this bull market, I'm going to start off by saying one, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my one long term. In this bull market, I would rather hold Solana. If you told me in this bull market, Tim, you have to get rid of – you have to transfer all of one into the other. I am transferring all of my Cardano into Solana. Why is that, though? A, because something I said earlier. Blockchain technology is nowhere close to what it will be in the future. This bull market, the next 18 months, is all about price action to me. That's what it is. How can I turn my X amount of dollars into 2X amount of dollars or 10X amount of dollars? What is going to do that for me? I believe Solana will have a larger return on investment. So in the short term, I'm choosing Solana. But if you're asking, and I think this is where we're kind of going, so I'm going to go ahead and go this route. If you're saying over the next 10, 15, 20 years, which coin would you rather hold? I'm going to choose Cardano, and here's why. As fast as Solana is, and I'm not saying Solana is going to die, but as fast as Solana is, we're going to hit a point. Everyone wants to talk about the competitive nature between Ethereum and Cardano. And now all of a sudden, you're just like, oh, Solana versus Cardano, Solana versus Ethereum. 
You want to know what competition I think is the most, uh, the the biggest one to take a look at? It's going to be Ethereum versus Solana. Why mm. is that? Because both of them are faster. Both of them are going to catch the eyes of the VCs and the institutions and the big money players. And ultimately, they're going after the same customer. I understand that, yes, Cardano does the same things, but they do it for different customer bases. This isn't a perfect scenario, but, for example, Apple and Microsoft got created darn near close to the same period of time. And they do darn near close to the same exact thing. But they're both large entities. One of them, Microsoft, said, I'm going to go after the institutions, the workers. I'm going to go get my computers into every single business, every single school, every single large data platform, and we're going to get our stuff out there. And Apple said, we are going after the individual. Ever notice that an Apple commercial always is focusing on one main figure? Apple is going after the individual person, the retailer. Microsoft is going after the companies. In the same way, Solana and Ethereum in reality are going after the institutional money, the big boy money. Cardano is going after the heart of someone who's fed up with the centralized aspect of finance, the centralized aspect of power, the centralized aspect in general. Those who appreciate freedom and decentralization, which I believe the likes of Bitcoin coming in is going to make people crave more and more, they will flock like a pack of seagulls into cardano long term because a cardano will fix all their problems it will become easier and more sustainable to build on it but b because it's going to be the last true decentralized cryptocurrency not counting bitcoin bitcoin is decentralized and will remain that way in its true form but when it comes to these things that build dApps that comes to these things that build and the world's going to use to build our financial systems our voting systems our our uh, data tracking systems there will come a time where people who appreciate decentralization will stand up and say, I don't care if I can do something slightly faster on Solana or Ethereum. Those are centralized cryptos. I want to prioritize my decentralization. Long-term Cardano wins for that reason. Yeah. Short-term though, I'm going with Solana. Long-term, I'm going with uh, with Cardano. Yes, I, a flock. I, I said I said flock, and then I was like, well, I can't say flock with a flock of seagulls. So I, you know, I had to. <laughs> I loved yeah. it. I love the Tim. Just a new moment for those of you who guys don't know. We throw the word VC around. What is VC? So on Wall Street, there's very big investment banks, right? You, you know, uh, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs might come to mind. Those have divisions that'll say, "Hey, rich person, we will take your money and invest it in return, and we'll beat the S and P." They suck at it compared to these guys. These are VCs, top ten overall VC funds. This is, uh, I, I recognize two of these because I listen to the All In podcast. They talk about it. Andreessen Horowitz and Sequoia Capital, I've heard of. The rest, no idea, right? <laughs> if you look at the, if you look at the international scene, you guys can take some of these and Google them, you know, and do, do whatever you want, learn about them. I don't know that there's going to be a ton for you to learn other than you're not a, <laughs> you're going to find very quickly that the difference between you and people investing in VC is you are not a registered investor, meaning you have a certain cap on what you can invest in and that may change in the world but as of now that is the reality you got to have a certain amount of money disposably to go ahead and enter into that title of registered advent, uh, investor right it's something we don't talk about because a you know crypto is just way better so that's yeah. what i'm going to invest in we can we can invest on the coin side but a lot of these VCs are investing on into the projects before they're even launched. And some of them have shares because they're they're private companies, for-profit companies. Others of them are relying solely on the coin, right, to go ahead and fund the the operations of the project and the growth of the project. So that's a little bit of a moment for the noobs. Tim, are you ready to go ahead? Go ahead. Well, I, I want to address something in chat because people are saying, because uh, in my comments I talked about Ethereum being faster. Uh, they're saying ETH is slow. And, and here's Correct. here's the truth. Yes, it's slow. In reality, when I'm talking about the speed of Ethereum, you're right. I'm talking about two different things. Solana's faster than Cardano in the speed category of transactions, right? Obviously, it's faster. When I'm saying Ethereum is faster, I'm not actually talking about transaction speed. I'm talking about development speed. It is a lot easier to develop your platforms yeah. on Ethereum than it is Cardano. I, again, I've had conversations with people. I'm a trader. I'm an investor. I am not sitting here messing with code, building whole new systems on blockchain technology, right? That's not my world. Those who I know who are in that world have told me, Tim, 
if you ever sit down trying to build something on Cardano, you're going to spend a long period of time. You have to make many revisions. The code is not simple language versus right. Ethereum. You sit down there and yes, the fees are higher and maybe the transaction speeds aren't that fast, but the building of whatever you want to put on the blockchain is a thousand times faster and easier on Ethereum. That's what I was talking about in that case of being faster. Now, again, yeah. Cardano is going to speed up. Cardano is going to be easier. Every upgrade they do makes it, A, the transaction speed faster, and B, makes it easier to build on. That's why they're still upgrading. But Ethereum is miles ahead of Cardano in that category, and then Solana is miles ahead in terms of transaction speed. But in reality, again, I see the two that hurt each other the most being Solana and Ethereum and Cardano almost being in a little world of its own. Yeah. Well, here's a, here's a question is, which is going to be easier to recover from, right? Uh, is it going to be, in the case of Solana, is it going to be able to recover from, you know, this these types of outages and ultimately, you know, the lack of decentralization? I, I think that a lot of VCs, a lot of big money is betting that it will it will get out in front and then recover and improve on those weaknesses that it has versus Cardano. Will it be able to be adopted and have faster transaction times? You know, can they recover from that? Is that something that they can grow in and develop and be better in instead of just not be better in, right? And so th those are important questions to ask as well. I want to remind everybody that this episode is brought to you by Decrypt.tax. They are our tax partners. We love, know, and like them. They're super great. And tax season is upon us. We are here. Don't wait any longer. The free 60-minute consultations with Ernest over at Decrypted.tax are going quickly. You're going to have to go ahead and book one very soon in order to get a meeting with Ernest. And don't let don't don't think to yourself, well, I'm not going to be able to get it in time. You will get it in time. You will have an amazing conversation. And there's there's no commitment in that conversation. You can go in there, just ask questions. And when you tell them that the investing bro sent you, you get 25% off those tax services. And yes, they do traditional investments. IRAs, Roths, and also real estate and anything that you might be uh, suffering through this tax season, whether it be a business or whatever. Tim, I've got a factoid here for you. Right. Are you ready? It is. In the early 1880s, Charles Brown Fleet, a physician from what Virginia city, invented chapstick as a lip balm product? Was it Lynchburg, Blacksburg, Chesapeake, or Roanoke, Tim? No idea. I'm an, uh, I don't know. Uh... When you think hydrated lips, what city comes to mind? No idea. Chesapeake, obviously, is the only one on the coast, whereas the rest of these are more in the mountains. Mm. Okay. okay. Both need chapstick because one's on the on the water and you're getting that breeze in, but the other one's in the cold, more frigid temperatures, and you get some winds in the mountains. Very I honestly cool. have no idea, so I'm – Gonna say Chesapeake. I don't know. I have no reason for it. I'm just gonna say it. Matt actually just said C. Uh, it'd be nicer for my uh, self esteem if Gia chimed in here and said C. <laughs> uh, but I have not seen Gia's name recently. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she was watching today. She's not able to join today, which means that I'm taking this one alone. We're gonna go with Chesapeake, Virginia. C, final answer. He's locking it in, and he is wrong uh, it is lynchburg virginia lynchburg. tim but that's okay, okay. check that's it out where liberty here. is that well yeah exactly history in the early 1880s charles brown fleet a physician and pharmacological thinker you don't meet a lot of those from lynchburg oh, yeah, virginia is. invented chapstick as a lip balm product and there it is this is a we are okay. not sponsored i want to make it clear not sponsored by chapstick yeah we hate them if, never if, if you if you have chapped lips <laughs> do not use chapstick it's from Lynchburg, the wrong city in Virginia. Yeah. She's a Blacksburg option. Exactly. I don't know if those exist, but. Exactly. All right. I love well, it. thank you for that fact toward the day. I don't know when I'm going to use it, but maybe that'll come up and save my life someday, uh, knowing that Lynchburg is the home of Chapstick. Uh, let's see, guys, as we get into our Q&A, go ahead and start dropping some coins in you want to see some technical analysis on. Of course, you guys know that our charts are always brought to you guys by Lux Algo, the number one paid indicators in trading view guys i'm, I'm telling you what, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be shooting a video right after we're done with the live stream today it's gonna go out tonight at 7 p.m and it's it's about my new favorite strategy using lux algo that i have been crushing my scalps on with a greater than 80 percent uh success rate so make sure tune in 
Watch that video tonight. Check out Lux Algo. Link down below. Guess what, guys? When you use our links, you A, can get up to 40% off, and B, it's a 30-day 30, 30 money-back guarantee. So go in, check it out, especially after you see the strategy video tonight. Trade with it, and if you don't make your money back in your trades, just get a return. That's fine. No pressure. You're not going to, though, because it's going to be awesome. It's going to change your trading life forever. But go ahead and go check that out. Let's see what we have here. XMR and Miro says Martian Yeti. XMR. We Let's take a look at XMR. It's let's a sad do it. Chart. Let's. A very sad looking chart. Oh, look at that. Oof. You Ooh. hate to see it. Yeah. You hate to see it. At one point today, the price was down 39%. Currently, more like 34. So the question becomes here, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do with XMR? Now, as T Shroom said, this is a large portion to do with Binance delisting it. So don't don't rule out the concept of that being a potential real stinker for XMR moving forward. That's of course is Monero. But as we pull up our Lux Algo indicators, again, our charts always brought to you by Lux Algo. Are we loading up our uh, order blocks yet? Ah, we filled it. All right. So you're gonna have to take my word for this, ladies and gentlemen. There was a, and Bedridden can back me up. Is Bedridden in chat? Because we were talking about this earlier today in the trading section on Discord for our members. There was a fat order block sitting down here around 116. I said, look out for us to fill this. Now, look where all the order blocks are in the daily chart. Not a single one of them beneath us. It is all up above, starting back up towards 170. Can go as high as all the way back up to 220, but we haven't been that high since way back in May of 2022. So let's not get ridiculous. Long story short, I do think that potentially you could see some sort of a bounce. Look at where the daily green reversal was. We just slashed right through it, of course, on really, really bad news. Uh, weekly chart, we came down and kissed right in there. Now, there is an order block here on the weekly chart, a little bit still below us, down towards 80. Um, but then, of course, you have the bounce back up. We have a nice order block back to where we just were, up towards 170. Monero, also a coin that, yes, we had a big move back here in April of 20, or we had a big move back in 2020. But since we've dropped down here in June of 2022, it, it feels comfortable, guys, trading in this little box right here. Uh, you know, and we have a couple outliers, you know, wicks down here, wicks down here, wicks down here. These are ultimately great buy orders, but it wants to be above 137 and as high as 186. Not going to be surprised if, yeah, Binance has a bump in the road, but this is a privacy coin. Like, I don't think the people trading Monero are just be like, oh, Monero's done. Okay, I'm going to stop using Monero. No. Yeah. Ultimately, I don't know anyone who uses Monero, except for one guy I met in Austin, Texas, who uses it to buy his shrooms. Uh, he's a mm. university student at Texas. Uh, and I'll find another way. People who want to buy shrooms are resilient. Um, <laughs> they're some of the most resilient Americans we have. Yeah, they will find a way to continue to keep using XMR. I think a potential trade back up above 130, up to the 140s could be interesting here for XMR. Yeah, I, I would. That's what I was thinking as well, Tim. Is fundamentally Monero is a high utility coin. It, I mean, yeah. it's an unfortunate utility in that you know it can it can help you you know obfuscate the eyes of of people you may not trust. But that is something that you can do completely legitimately if you just want privacy. You just don't want people snooping around and knowing. Yeah. Where you're moving money around, you know. Uh, obviously, there's another motivation with with wanting that type of service is is bad, right? So uh, there's a reason why Binance just delisted it, and it has a lot to do with the fact that that exchange is, if it wants to continue to They're run, under a lot of scrutiny, yeah, exactly. It's going to have to comply in this season of regulation. Yeah, Matt C says I miss our shroom buddy. Fun story. Yeah, we it was I was with Matt C in Austin, Texas when we met our shroom but our shroom friend, and it wasn't T shroom. It wasn't me. It was yeah. a different. I didn't exist back then. It was then. his brother. It was yeah. P shroom. Uh, uh, you know, guys, I am actually as we're kind of wrapping up the show today. We only had time for one coin again. We had a great discussion. It was a fun stream. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as much as T shroom and I enjoyed it. But no one, I've been watching chat. Not a single one of you have complimented me today on my hoodie. Not a single one of you have noticed that I am wearing an Investing Bros hoodie. It was, it was made for me. Uh, Morel here at the office bought it for me. He actually bought me two of them. Uh, I think I'd want to get another one with maybe the big emblem like right on the chest. Uh, we don't know. We've flirted with the concept of doing merch. If you want, 
If you would be interested in a hoodie or a hat or any type of merch, go into our dis- – this I, I want to know how committed you are because it's really easy to put it in chat. It's really easy to say it in the comment section. Join our Discord. Go into our general chat, absolutely free, and type in there all caps, DAGGUMMIT T-SHROOM and t- – you got to be committed to this whole bit. DAGGUMMIT t- Tim and T-SHROOM. We want some freaking merch. And, and T-SHROOM and I will think about doing something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, Mellow Fellow said he did. Okay, a Mellow Fellow gets a pass. He he did compliment it. We uh, he said we that. did flirt with getting merch, and merch just did not flirt back. Tim, I've got a pretty interesting take here from Alex okay. Jones, which now just has a live show every single day on Twitter. It seems there we with go. thousands of of live views. His headline today: Alex Jones Show Live. Tucker Carlson tries to stop World War Three in history making interview with Putin. So it's Ooh. actually not just the investing bros that are anticipating that. That monumental interview there. So, very interesting. Yeah. Well, guys, it's 401. It's time to wrap up the show. T Shroom, can you pull back up our quote of the day? You're ahead of me. You're ahead of me. From Epic Titus. Epic, epic quote here. Epic Titus, Epic Titus. Epic Titus, Epic Titus, you know? Epictetus. It's another pronunciation, ep- Epictetus, which I think that might be the original Greek. I'm sure it's pronounced something completely different than anything we just said. Either way, he said, if you wish to improve, Be content to appear foolish or stupid. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I agree with this quote 100%. And as we kind of close out the show today, our thought of the day, too many people, especially as we get older and we grow into our adult years, we have this temptation to feel ashamed of being wrong, of being ashamed to ask why. But it's the greatest thing about our youth. It's the greatest thing about children is they're so inquisitive. They always want to learn and they try and they try. And I've said this before, but ladies and gentlemen, the greatest way to learn something is actually sometimes not to get it right. In fact, sometimes when you get something right or you do well the first time you ever try it, you might have done it on accident. And you get a habit thinking, oh, I'm just going to be good at this no matter what. But in reality, it's the failures. It's the falling short that grows the deepest things that allow you to be good at something long, long term. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Some of you might say, Tim, you're still not good. At, uh, you're still not good at TA. And that's okay. You can say that. I'd like to think most of you appreciate my TA. Most of you, especially that have watched me from the very beginning of my technical analysis only three years ago, are saying, dang, Tim has come a long way. But I've said this over and over again. How did I learn TA? I did not learn by studying a book and then becoming an expert. I did it by learning and asking questions and doing technical analysis and failing and getting it wrong. And the more and more I learned from my failures, the more and more I got to enjoy the successes. It applies to everything else in life. Do not run away from something because it's hard. Do not run away from something because you might fail. Embrace the failure. Embrace the sucking. Embrace the humiliation because it's only that way that you'll truly move forward with a new skill, with a new asset, and be good at something in the future. Go ahead and embrace your failure. Guys, we love each and every one of you. We will see you tomorrow morning. Adios. Trying to make paper. Turn that better than cake. Money like Lego. Connect the dots that bank. We are investing bros. We are investing bros. Army pipe. Lethal on trade. Entries and exits, worthy of praise. Tim, the professor of the TA. Shout it out loud on the PA. Teach Room's news, catch a word. Doing better than what he deserves. Beamer, leave no evidence. Soon fly coop with his dividends. Huh. Trying to make paper, turn that better than cake. Money like Lego, connect the dots that bank. We are investing bros. We are investing bros.